Welcome to Worship with Spirit in the Hills Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Drew Ingram, and whether it is your first time with us or you are back again, it is a joy to have you with us in worship today. We give thanks that the Holy Spirit has gathered you together with us, and we want to partner with you. We want to walk alongside you in your journey of faith as we seek to share God's love in the world. Right here in the Spicewood, Lakeway, Bee Cave area of Texas and throughout the world. I hope that you will join us every Sunday for worship online wherever you are watching this sermon video. Facebook, YouTube, our website spiritinthehills.org. We worship online right now every Sunday at 10 a.m., all of those places. I hope to see you there. Jesus continues to call disciples in our gospel reading today. It's the first disciples he calls in the gospel according to Mark, though we heard the story of the call of Philip and Nathaniel last week from John's gospel. Jesus continues to proclaim the good news, to live out his ministry, and to call others to join him, to follow where he leads, to join in the movement of God's kingdom of peace and wholeness being brought into the world in the person of Jesus the Christ. Our gospel reading today comes from the first chapter of Mark. So grab your Bible or open up a new tab in your web browser, the Bible app on your phone. Let's read along together. We're going to pick up right after Jesus' baptism and his temptation in the wilderness. We'll start with verse 14. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. And we respond, glory to you, O Lord. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. And saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. And we respond, praise to you, O Christ. There is immediacy in Jesus' call. I feel like a lot of what has been going on this last year has felt like it needed immediate attention. And much of it did. It's almost like we've been in crisis mode. Just having to respond to what was most pressing right in front of us. The ways that Racial injustice and the need for criminal justice reform presented themselves in this past year. The ever-present risk and suffering brought on by this virus, this coronavirus pandemic. The ever-widening gap between neighbors The sense of isolation brought on by the need to quarantine and isolate in some ways. The need to be physically distant from one another. Political unrest seems like one thing that needs immediate attention after another, after another, after another. And where is the time for breath? One of the most present and prevalent words in the gospel according to Mark, it's the word immediately. We get it in this text a couple of times. It's just on to the next thing. There is so much force and momentum and movement and immediacy to the Jesus movement, to the reign of God come near. 
It is in motion and nothing will stop it. God's mission of reconciliation and peace. God's call for repentance. God's new creation springing forth has so much momentum and force. It demands immediate attention. I don't think that there is any context surrounding the call of these disciples that if changed would reduce the immediacy or would keep Jesus from calling these to follow him. I don't think if Galilee had been in better shape, which it wasn't, that Jesus wouldn't have called disciples to follow him. And they need to follow him right away. There's an immediacy, right? James and John, leave dad in the boat and skedaddle. Drop the work that they were doing because a pressing matter has come to them. We know this feeling. We know these things that press in upon us and take precedency, take priority. But nothing does this quite like the mission of God. Quite like the reign of God come near in the person of Jesus. And yet, amid so much crisis and so many things that claim our immediate attention, it can be really difficult to prioritize the work of the gospel. It can. It can fall to the wayside. We can place priority on other things, things that don't share the good news of God come near, the good news of a God who sees, the good news of a God who is with us, even when we feel more alone than we've ever been. We put other things ahead of it. There is a a crisis of discipleship imposing itself upon the four who Jesus calls in this text. And I think there is a crisis of discipleship that continually imposes itself on us because Christ comes and bids us follow. Go where he is leading. Share that simple but world-changing message. The time is fulfilled. The time is now, Jesus says. It has to start somewhere. It has to start sometime. What better place than right here and right now? The time is fulfilled. The reign of God, the kingdom of God, God's way of being, what God desires for all of us to live and move and have being and be a part of is here. It has come near. Turn from whatever else it has that has pulled you away from this and believe. Trust in this good news, this gospel, that Christ has come near. This week, we witnessed the inauguration of the next president and a new government structure is coming into place. This happens sometimes every four years, sometimes Every eight years, sometimes a little bit different than that in our country's history. And context around us changes all of the time. Just ask our Spirit in the Hills Council how often we try to keep up with what the latest news from public health officials is to determine how and when and if we can gather together again in ways that are safe, that promote the life of you and of all of our neighbors and our community as a whole, lest we become a hot spot for the spread of this thing that continues to take its toll on us. And yet, how do we still share God's love with one another. Things are constantly changing and arising. But Christ's call is constant. Jesus calls us to turn from whatever else has pulled our attention back to God 
to God's kingdom way, to be about the same work that we have been doing again and again, to love God with all that we have and all that we are, the fullness of ourselves, and to love our neighbor as ourself. To love as Jesus loves. To be the body of Christ. To do God's work with our hands. To go where Jesus leads. To hear his call even when we have preoccupied ourselves with something else, and get up and follow. To turn our attention to the divine renewing of all things right here in our midst. To let love be our way and our guide. To do nothing from selfish ambition, but look to the needs of our neighbor in whom we see the person of Christ, in whom we hear the call of Christ. Friends, this is what we will be about this year, just as it is what we are about always as the church here at Spirit in the Hills. Proclaiming the good news that God's way has come near living in it now so that when people look upon us, they see Jesus. They see fingers pointing the way as John did to the one who it was to come, the one who is now and the one who will come again. And when they look upon us, they see bread given away for the hungry, that they hear the good news that they are beloved. Friends, I sometimes, believe it or not, let things preoccupy my attention. Let other things press their way in so that the proclamation of the gospel and the living out of God's kingdom are not at the forefront of my mind. But what brings them back is this, is Jesus. The voice of Jesus that calls the disciples today. The person of Jesus who they could not help but follow immediately. Because I have encountered Jesus. Who has seen me and looked on me with love. And my life is transformed by that love. For God looks upon me exactly as I am and says, I love you. You are enough. See what I will do with you and what you have to offer to the world. Let's get to work together, bringing wholeness to a broken creation. Reconciling divisions that you thought were irreconcilable. Forgiving where you thought grudges would last forever. Showing mercy when you thought punishment was the only option. Giving love where you heard only hate before. Moving you from fear to love. As my encounters with the life-giving love of God through Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit that bring the gospel ministry back to the forefront of my life. That mean I cannot help but give an invitation to others as Philip, when he is called, does to Nathaniel, come and see, come and see. Come and see. Know the gift of God's grace that is already yours. Come and hear about it. Come and see a community that lives it out, that embodies it, that wraps you in love, that feeds your body and your soul. For they are both you. I hope that you hear Christ's call afresh this day this year that we go about listening for the voice of Christ calling us to move in the next right faithful steps 
You'll hear about some of those things and ways that we have heard Christ calling us and we seek to join in God's work in the world at our annual meeting that takes place this Sunday. Today, if you're listening to this and watching this when this goes live, we keep on listening. We want to hear from you. What is God calling you to be and do? What is God calling to you for us at Spirit in the Hills to be and to do? And we know, at the very least, that the time is now. The time is fulfilled. That the reign of God has come near. That we have an invitation to live in it now and forever. That we are called to repent, to return, and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. To return to God, to have the same mind in us that was in Christ Jesus, and to trust the good news of the way of Jesus that leads us to life abundant and everlasting, love from which nothing can separate us. Come and see what God will do in and among us this year. Hear the call of Christ again. Share it with me and your neighbors and invite everyone you can think of to come and see and know A God who is with them. A God who loves them more than anything. And a God who offers them life now and forever. Amen. As we seek to invite people into the love of Jesus and we are reminded of it ourselves, I'm thankful for your presence here today. Yes, even though we are not here in the same place together today, I am grateful for your presence right now and that God is present with you and that God connects us across time and space. I hope that we will see you again with us next week and that every Sunday at 10 a.m. online, you join us on Facebook, YouTube, or our website, spiritinthehills.org, for a time of worship together. Receive this blessing. Holy and gracious God, whose call bids us to immediately follow, to drop all else that we might have put over you, to refocus and reprioritize, to repent and return to you, O Lord. Because when we do, you fill us with hope and with joy. You remind us of love and you move us to be love. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you now and always. Amen.